What's going on, YouTube fam? This is the Wealth Investing Network. We do this for the win. Skipping the normal intro, but please leave a like on this video. Do all the YouTube things. That really helps the channel grow and that helps me create better content for you. That's a win win. And we like that here at the Wealth Investing Network. Jumping right into Tesla. We're going to be comparing this stock to Beam Global stock. For the most part, I'm going to be talking about headwinds and tailwinds for these companies. Tesla's had an incredible run up. I'm not invested in Tesla, but I am invested in NEO. These stocks kind of trade similarly, so I want Tesla to do well. And I own shares of Beam Global here in my Robinhood account. You can see my average cost here. One good thing about Tesla is that they have crushed their expectations in terms of vehicle deliveries. Most of these vehicles that they delivered were the Model 3 and the Model Y, which are the company's more affordable vehicles. While it's great news that they were able to deliver approximately 184,000 vehicles in Q1 of 2021, up over 100%, basically doubled year over year, they basically halted their deliveries in their more expensive vehicles. Now, I've been following Tesla stock for a long time, and positive news generally is what's going to make their stock price go up. And this is positive news, but I want to keep in mind that profits at the end of the day is what we want as investors. Tesla can make a better margin and more money off of their Model S and their Model X. They're selling these Model Ys at a more affordable price in China. And while they're making a lot of revenue off of these, I don't think they're making a lot of profits off of these. They say the Model S and Model X have been exceptionally well received, but if they were so well received, they'd be producing more of them. But analysts on average were only expecting deliveries close to 170,000. So I think they are gonna get this benefit of good news because investors are monitoring deliveries and they can say, well, we delivered more than we expected. Also in the news, PepsiCo said that they would deploy 15 electric semi trucks from Tesla later this year. And Tesla is selling EV credits to Volkswagen in China. So check this out. Tesla has been profitable for the last few quarters. And a big part of that is thanks to selling regulatory electric vehicle credits. Since Tesla only builds and sells electric vehicles, the company always has excess credits to sell to other vehicle manufacturers. They're a source of income for Tesla, and lately these credits have been making the company profitable. And as we know, Tesla had a huge run-up, partially because they were included in the S&P 500. That led to a lot of forced buying. You might have a retirement account, or you might be invested in the S&P 500 through an ETF, but only profitable companies get to be on this list. And for a long time, Tesla couldn't produce positive earnings. They produced a lot of revenue, but they didn't produce positive earnings. We're gonna see when we jump into the analysis that Tesla's margins on selling these cars is not very high. So taking advantage of the fact that they only produce electric vehicles and they get a lot of credits from governments, they can use that as a source of income. They wanna get more into solar. They got into Bitcoin. They bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. They say you can buy a Tesla with Bitcoin now. And they say if you buy a Tesla with Bitcoin, they're just gonna keep the Bitcoin because they think it's an appreciating asset. And in kind of hitching their wagon to Bitcoin, when Bitcoin goes down, the Tesla stock is at risk of going down because they're kind of tied together at this point. But I guess their hope is that Bitcoin keeps going up and their cash can keep going up. They can do that without diluting shareholders because if they dilute shareholders too much, keep pumping their stock out there and taking cash, investors could get nervous and start selling the stock. But for both of the stocks that we're talking about today, an upcoming infrastructure plan in the U.S. could be big tailwinds for these companies. If we see investments in electric vehicles, in EV charging, in renewable energy, both Tesla and Beam Global have a chance to benefit. Now, I don't count Beam Global as just an EV charging stock. Their main product is this EV Arc, but in terms of the charging itself, it's the EV charger of your choice. But the Arc is really a power source. There's basically a rig that they've patented where you can drop this bad boy into an existing parking spot. Now, I've talked about Beam Global and Tesla in other videos. So please, if you need to catch up, go check out some of my other videos and come right back. Links in the description. But basically, Beam Global and Tesla aren't exactly competitors. You can charge your Tesla at an EV Arc. Beam Global partners with EV charging companies. You can see here from their website, like ChargePoint, like Juicebox, like Electrify America, Blink. Really, it's the charger of your choice. Now, they say they're the fastest deployed and most scalable because if you want a Tesla charging station or ChargePoint or any of the others, you're going to need permits. You're going to need construction, electrical work, and a utility bill. But there's limitations. It powers up to 265 e-miles per day. But this isn't really for residential use. This is for businesses, shops and stores, maybe your workplace, where you're not going to be parked here charging all day. You're likely only going to be charging for a limited amount of time and most likely with a level one or a level two charger, which also takes a long time. Or another vision of this is, let's say you're a city government or some kind of government facility and you have, let's say, 10 electric 
electric vehicles, a fleet, and these vehicles are going out for a limited range every day and they come back and you need to charge them, but they're not necessarily going to be on empty when they come back. You just need to juice them up for the e-miles they've driven over the course of a day. An EV arc from Beam Global could be a great solution for you. And you can see here as I scroll through their customer list, there's a lot of governments, city governments. They also got a GSA contract, which basically means that the federal government in the U.S. has them on their list as a good customer to work with. And they're not just in sunny California. They're all over. I keep up to date with their website. Most recently, EV arcs have been deployed in Kansas and in Alabama, as well as in Oregon, another government buyer here. Beam also has patents for a solar tree for charging more vehicles or larger vehicles. And they used to be known as Envision Solar, so keep that in mind. And they also have patents for, and they're working on a drone recharging network. Imagine if you can charge a drone via solar while it's flying, it seems that could extend the range to basically a limitless capacity. But Beam is very early on in this, and they're gaining popularity with their EV arc, bringing in some revenue. So let's look at the numbers. If you're not familiar with the channel, Check out my How to Analyze Stocks video in the description, but I wanna remind you that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. If you're here to follow my journey, great, because these videos are for entertainment. And so I'm getting these numbers just based on rough estimates. We've got their stock prices here, their market caps. You can see Tesla's on a whole nother scale of magnitude. Their market cap is 635 billion, while Beam Global's is at about 315 million. We've got the shares outstanding, and I put plus signs here because both of these companies have been doing stock offerings. They sell more stock, which gives them cash, but for current shareholders like me, that dilutes my shares. Now, if the cash can ultimately make their business better, then it's fine, but investors get nervous if this keeps happening over and over again. You can see Tesla's approaching more than a billion shares outstanding. We've got their PE ratios or price to earnings ratios. Like I said, Tesla is finally profitable, but this number is very high. You want this number a lot lower. The average PE ratio for the S&P 500 is about 20 historically, although it's moved a little higher these days. Beam Global still has negative earnings. They reported earnings recently. They crushed on their revenue numbers, but they missed on their earnings. So while they generated a lot of revenue, their cost for doing so still leaves them unprofitable at the end of the day. And you can see their revenue here. Now let's get into the price to sales ratio. You want this number to be as close to one as possible because it's the market cap divided by their 12 month revenue. The higher this is, the more of a multiple you're paying for the stock. Both Tesla and Beam Global are much higher than the average price to sales ratios for tech companies. And really Tesla's a car company, but we can have that conversation in the comments. But both have impressive revenue growth numbers for what they are, and that's a reason to pay a multiple for the stock. Beam Global's revenue growth is 344%. Now that they've got their technology down, they're selling a lot more of these EV arcs. So for revenue growth like this, and they're projected to even increase their pace, that's a reason to pay a high multiple for a stock. Tesla's revenue growth is impressive, but to keep producing like this at such a high scale, eventually you wanna see this revenue number go up a lot higher so that they can grow into this valuation. Jumping into macro trends, you can see their stock price, their sales, and their price to sales ratio here. Well, they've had a price to sales ratio this high before, and as their sales increased, they grew into the valuation and their price to sales ratio went down. My unqualified prediction is that either Tesla's price is gonna have to come down or they're gonna have to double their sales relatively quickly because this stock does not hold a high price to sales ratio for long. Skipping down, Beam Global's net income margin is not great, but this is excusable for a young company. And Tesla's net income margin is at about 2%. And we've got their current ratios. This is basically assets over liabilities. Beam Global has a lot of cash on their balance sheet with very little debt. And Tesla, if this number were to start approaching one, that would be a concern. But this is a fine number for this company. The last thing I want to do here is jump into the technical charts, show you the simple moving averages. These are basically technical indicators that lag behind the actual stock price. Gives you a sense of the trend and where it might go. I've added them here. The green line is the 20-day simple moving average. The red line is the 50 day and the orange line is the 200 day. This pattern green over red over orange is what you like to see in an uptrend, but both Tesla and Beam Global are now in a downtrend. Switching over to Tesla, there was a level around 550 that was kind of an inflection point. There seems like there could be some support in this 550 to 600 range, and especially as it starts to get close to the 200 day moving average. Now the news about infrastructure could create some tailwinds for this company that could maybe make it resume its uptrend. But from what I'm seeing, the momentum is not quite there yet. And so we just have to keep our eye on these, but let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm gonna go get my lazy Sunday on. See you in the next video.